In a recent video, I made a coat rack and a shoe rack using some salvaged oak veneered MDF. Prior to me getting this material, it had been stored in a cold and damp building, hence it's affected by mould pretty badly in some places. The pieces that are most affected, I can't do anything with. I've tried cleaning off the mould and that doesn't work. I've tried sanding it off, but I've actually sanded through the veneer onto the MDF and the mould has seeped all the way through the veneer. However, I do have a few pieces left that aren't badly affected by mould and I want to do something with the material that I've got left just to get it out of my workshop so that I have more space to work in. I've got four short pieces like this and three long pieces like this. I used SketchUp to draw up the pieces of MDF that I had left over to see what ideas I could come up with that would use up the material that I had. Because some of the pieces were quite short, I had the idea to make a couple of simple matching bedside tables. I'm going to use these short pieces for the shelves and the top of the bedside tables, and I'm going to cut the sides and the bottoms from these pieces. One of the longer pieces that I have has a bigger trim than the other pieces. This one measures 10 centimeters, and the other pieces measure 5 centimeters. I'm going to cut the bottom panels for the bedside tables out of the piece with the bigger trim. I started by cutting those bottom shelves for the bedside units. I used the mitre saw to cut one end off clean, then I measured up the length that I wanted and made the second cut. I used a handsaw to finish off the cuts. Then I used the first piece as a template to mark up a second bottom shelf and cut that to size two. This time I used the cross cut sled on the table saw as the piece was now a more manageable size. With the bottom shelves done, next I cut the side panels. Again, I cut one end off clean, measured and cut to length. So now I've got four side pieces and two bottom panels. Next I ripped the side panels to the desired depth for the units which was 32 centimeters. I've got two of the side panels set up here and I want the bottom shelf to fit in place like so. I laid down the side panels on their fronts and slotted the shelf inside. With the bottom shelf slotted in, I can mark up the depth that I need the bottom shelf to be. I ripped both bottom shelves to get them to the right depth. The bottom shelf is now a really good fit can see that it's perfectly flush with the back of the side panels. Now I can fix this in place and I'll do that by cutting some cleats to support the shelves. I've got some spare pieces from the parquet coffee table that I made recently so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these in half and then I'll get two cleats out of each piece. Now I've got the trim of the bottom shelf positioned flush with the bottom of the side panel and this is where I want my cleats to be to support the shelf. 81 millimeters, 81 millimeters. I'm going to glue the cleat to the side panel first and I'm not going to put any glue on the shelf because what I want to do is glue this in place, take the shelf out and then add screws. Because I want this to be a fairly quick build, I'm going to use the Jimmy Duresta tip because I don't want to glue and clamp these and wait for the glue to dry. So I'm going to use a mixture of wood glue and hot glue. 
The hot glue will dry really quickly and it will hold the cleat in place while the wood glue dries. So I'll hold that in place for a few seconds while the hot glue takes. And now I can slide out the bottom shelf. And I'll add a couple of screws. So the cleats are added and now the bottom shelf just slots in. However, I should have really drilled a couple of pilot holes in the bottom of this cleat in order to secure the shelf to the cleat. This is going to be quite awkward to drill now, uh, so I might just need to drill this at a slight angle and hopefully I can get a screw in there. That worked out okay and I can add a screw in there to secure the shelf to the cleat. I'm also going to add another screw through the bottom shelf trim into the side panel trim just to save me having to drill another awkward hole. I'm counter sinking these holes too just so that I don't split this small piece of wood. Before adding the screws I'm just going to apply some wood glue and because parts of this shelf are finished I'm just going to scrape off the finish so that the glue adheres properly. This is the second bedside table and I can learn from my mistakes this time and drill some pilot holes before I assemble. Next I'm going to add some more cleats to support a central shelf and I've cut a couple of pieces of scrap to the height I want the cleats to be and these will help to keep everything level. This time I drilled the pilot holes with a countersink bit at the drill press table. Next I could cut the central shelves to the correct width and depth. I didn't have any more time left to work on these on this particular day so I didn't use the hot glue trick this time. Instead I just added a couple of weights to the shelves, clamped them and left them to dry. The following day I could then add screws for a bit of extra strength. Now I just need to add the top. I kept the best pieces aside. I need to cut these to the right width for the unit. And then finally, I'll just need to add some oak trim to the side here to hide the MDF edges. I made a cut most of the way through the top panels but left the trim protruding by about three millimeters on each end, which would be the thickness of my trim for the edges. Ooh. 
now I just need to clean up this edge. I've got the workpiece clamped to the table and I'll use a chisel to take off the excess material. I cut the 3mm thick trim pieces on the table saw out of some offcuts. I used wood glue and tape to attach them to the sides. I deliberately left these pieces of trim ever so slightly proud of the surface of the bedside table tops and I've got my block plane set to take a very very thin shaving and I'm going to use this to get the trim flush but I need to be careful not to damage the veneer so I'm going to be holding the plane at a very very slight angle just to make sure that I don't chip any of that That feels flush now. These edges are quite sharp, so I'm just going to use some 80 grit sandpaper to break the edges. To get the colour of the trim to better match the existing finish, I'm going to apply a coat of boiled linseed oil and I'll wait half an hour or so and then apply another coat and I'll keep doing that until it's a good match. When I cut the top shelf, unfortunately I cut right through one of the biscuit joints. So I've made a small plug to fill the hole with an offcut of oak. Time to fit the top now. I'm just going to position the top centrally. That feels about right. I've got some more cleats cut and I've got the pilot holes drilled in them already. I'm going to use the hot glue trick again so that I can stick them to the underside of the top. Now I can remove the top. And I'll secure those with a screw. I've got one of the units laying face down and what I'm going to do is route out a rebate joint and that will later accommodate a back panel. The rebate bit in my router left rounded edges, so I squared off the corners with a chisel. And now I can add the top with the cleats attached. Next I measured the distances between the rebate joints on the back so that I could cut some plywood to size. I used some clean plywood for this that was around 4mm thick.
first try! I'm going to add some pencil marks where the shelf is so that I know where to drive the screws. I used some panel pins to secure the back panel. If anyone was wondering, this is how my work surfaces look during and after a project. <laughs> 